I initially got into Bitcoin mining after I went down the Bitcoin rabbit hole as an exposure or a leverage play on Bitcoin. But now these companies have evolved really into energy infrastructure plays. And uh, I don't know if it's coincidence or timing or uh, preemptive thought, but they, they seem to have found themselves in the perfect spot at the perfect time with access to contracted power, existing infrastructure, and that underlying exposure to Bitcoin, which I'm so passionate about. Welcome back to the Compass Mining Podcast. My name is Jared, and today I am joined by the Power Mining Analysis boys, Bryce McNally and Anthony Power. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time. We're going to dive into a bunch of different things here. But before we do, I just want to say it has been awesome as someone who's creating content and who's in the Bitcoin mining industry to see people just kind of run. You guys are sprinting and it's awesome to see. I think since the new year, you'll have the stats, but you've recorded, I don't know, it seems like a billion podcasts and you've you know been able to talk with some of the biggest movers and shakers in the industries. So to get your time today, and I know Anthony said he's already got a run at the end of this, uh, let's just dive right in. But I, I wanted to say that uh, before we get going. So I'm not sure who to pass the mic to first. Um, I guess I'll start with you, Bryce. Bryce, I, I was so curious watching you guys grow. And I know some of the, some of the past where you know maybe Anthony was going to try to uh, link up with someone else who's very well known in the mining industry. But in the end, you guys were able to come together and create the Power Mining Analysis brand. But I wanted to ask, what has the transition been like for you? And we can see in your background here with McNally Money, you have stocks, investments, personal finance. What has been the transition of starting to really take a lot of your energy away from maybe stocks, investments, personal finance and dive into this completely new world, um, which is Bitcoin mining? Yeah, well, first and foremost, thanks for having me. This is the first time I've actually been a guest on a podcast. So you're right. <laughs> I do about 300 a year or so, I think. Anthony and I are well over 100. We've done over 50 CEO interviews just in the Bitcoin mining space this year. So we do put out a lot of content. Luckily for me, um, my partner likes to talk. So he takes care of the, <laughs> the heavy lifting and uh, I just guide the dire uh, guide the discussion. Uh, so how this all came about, I was a director for a uh, corporate director for a telco here in Canada and COVID came around. Anthony actually got involved in, in COVID as well. I'll let him explain. But COVID came around. I wasn't having to commute to the office. I was work from home. So I had about two hours a day of extra time. Uh, my wife was pregnant at the time. I knew I was going to have a little kid. I knew time was going to be tight. So I said, hey, if I'm going to try my own thing, this is the time to do it. Let's see what I can do. I'd been investing in stocks since university. I always love finance. Um, I took business management in university. Love money, love numbers, uh, love investing. Watched a lot of YouTube content that was similar in the past. So I said, hey, I'm gonna try it out. I don't care how, how crappy my first video is. I would encourage you guys go in, watch my first ever YouTube video if you wanna laugh. I was terrible. And uh, fast forward a year, I started getting some corporate clients, some uh, sponsored content, basically people coming on talking about their businesses. So it was definitely starting to pick up. Uh, then my my regular job, I actually got a buyout clause. Our company got purchased. It enabled me to take a package, which equated to 12 months severance. So I went full time on the YouTube. At that point in time, I was learning about Bitcoin. I was going down the rabbit hole. Anthony was already a well-known person in the space. So I invited him on the channel really as clickbait to try and get some extra views, some Bitcoin audience. Uh, he caught on to me quickly. I said, Anthony, when are you coming back? He said, no, no, not, not a chance, buddy. Am I giving you free <laughs> subscribers for no reason? And you're right uh, in saying, Jarrett, he was actually originally uh, getting a game plan together with Will Foxley, who we both think very highly of. We were fortunate enough to meet in Nashville. Awesome uh, creator and, and space member in the Bitcoin community. Uh, so Anthony called me up. He said, hey, I think I have an idea that'll work here. I'll let him get into this. Do you, do you want to try and, and put something together that would be a centralized, consolidated spot for education, information in the Bitcoin mining space? And from the time period of, of about November last year, uh, during December, we put this whole platform together, the, the website, the articles, the YouTube, the branding, uh, brought this all together. And since then, uh, I guess the rest is history. So that's how it all came together. That's the transition from the banner behind me into power mining analysis. And uh, how it feels is, is phenomenal. I've always wanted to be in the Bitcoin mining space. My first interview with Sue Ennis, I said, hey, you got to get me a job in this sector. It's awesome. 
And now I get to wake up every day, talk about Bitcoin, learn about Bitcoin and share that with our audience. That That's amazing. And Anthony, I'm going to pass you the mic. Anthony and I recorded an episode a couple months ago where Anthony really broke down his kind of dive and delve into Bitcoin mining, which is also tied back to Will, is tied, ties back to Will Foxley. And as many of you know, Anthony writes amazing articles for us here at Compass Mining. And I'm going to leave that link to all of his articles below. And one of the things that you and I can do, Bryce, we can exchange notes offline because I also started podcasting in the middle of the pandemic. I had an abundance of time and I wanted to do something where, hey, if I get locked in a room again, and I can't go anywhere. How could I still add value? How could I still find community? How could I still create energy online? And so I was like, okay, well, podcasting seems like an interesting one. So, so you and I will have to talk about that. But yeah, Anthony, how has it been? And I don't know. And also it feels, I feel humble to know that this is the first time Bryce has been a guest on a podcast and Bryce, this will not be the last time definitely on this podcast um, and other podcasts. But Anthony, how has it been working with Bryce who admittedly, maybe before starting to create the power mining analysis brand, maybe wasn't as into Bitcoin mining as maybe Will Foxley would have been if we're going to drop names as we already have. So how has it been? And, and, and I say that because the way I see Bryce approach Bitcoin mining is very much like... Um, the documentary creator, Ken Burns, which is just full on curiosity. And I love what Bryce said saying, I just want to learn because I, I don't think you can ever be an expert in Bitcoin mining, even though maybe some people think they are because it moves too fast. So anyways, Anthony, how has it been kind of working with Bryce, creating power mining analysis and growing, as he said, with 50 CEO interviews already, and we're only in September? Yeah, I mean, it's been great. And, and, and Bryce alluded to the fact that um, I think it was July last year, I went on his channel for the first time and we had a great podcast that, you know, Bryce actually um, has probably got more in the mind space in, in to, you know, the, than Will to a certain extent. Will brought me in to sort of be that mining, that mining, uh, you know, ex expert. And, I, and I'm not an expert in Bitcoin mining. I'm learning every day. And, you know, um, the benefit I have is I can remember certain, you know, numbers. Being an accountant, numbers come come quite easy to me, so I can st I can remember a lot of the numbers associated with mine. So it helps when you're trying to talk about them. But I did a couple of podcasts with um, with Bryce, and it was like uh, I think at the end of the second one, he said, "Yeah, and I'll see you next week, uh, same time." And I went, oh, "Hang on a second, how does this this isn't right?" <laughs> so I said, "No, I said I don't mind occasionally, but I said I'm I'm trying to develop um, a, a, a thing at the time." And then Will literally not long after that said he was looking at setting up something, wanted me to be part of it. And, you know, it wasn't to be in the end, but actually um, what Will did was um, effectively get me off my backside and do something because I think I, I retired, it's like eight years ago I retired. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, having got back into, you know, this through COVID, just, just, for, just to stop the boredom, really. Um, and it was, you know, a, a curious place to be. And I was interested. It was all number related. And great people in the space as well. Everyone's everyone's very friendly in Bitcoin mining. You know, you go to conferences, you meet up with people. There's no sort of like NASA's or anything like that. Everyone's quite friendly. We're all in the same space, um, no matter where you are around the world. And so it's just a great place to be. And 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 I rang Bryce literally when I realised that me and Will weren't going to go forward and said, look. This, there's an idea here. I think we could do it. And I'd enjoyed those two podcasts. It was just the fact that, you know, Bryce had a model where he was trying to deliver revenue for himself. And I was trying to look at how I could, you know, um, uh, produce something for myself, you know, try and go in a direction um, that would that would help me do more effectively. And what we've created has helped me do more now. But it's a lot of it's a lot of time and effort to get to where we are now. This has took a, a journey of, you know, nine months and it's not just me and Bryce. There are four people behind the scenes that you don't see on a regular basis who have helped get us to where we are today. And without that support, we, we wouldn't be here because we, we need that support with the amount of work we're doing. Yeah, Anthony, and I want to thank you for saying that because I think behind every successful this, someone on stage, right now we're on a digital stage, there's a whole team behind. And I know I have my team as well as Compass who are who are supporting me to do this and, and, and doing that. And I think that's really important because, you know, we had Paul, our CEO is on Simply Bitcoin TV the other day. And they also took the time to thank their team because it's just like, there's, it takes a lot more to do this. And, and Bryce, 
I will go back and watch your first YouTube and I'll probably post about it on X because I'm sure it's similar to my first YouTube. It was painful. Uh, the audio was bad. The lighting was bad. Every, every just There was nothing good, nothing redeeming, but it, you know, you have to do the first one to get to the second one to then get to a hundred. Right. And so I've written down some questions, which feels, I normally don't try to write down too many questions because it just kind of feels, I, I don't know. It feels like I get trapped in a box and all I have to go through these questions, but we were kind of talking about it a little bit before we recorded, but I'd love to hear from both of you where we are today. We're in September, it's September 12th. This will come out next week in about five days. What is exciting for you guys right now? And I, and I asked that cause I kind of want to encapsulate this moment because I know that in a month we'll look back at this and be like, wow, that already happened. Like that happened so quickly. So Anthony, do you actually, do you want to, do you want to keep going and talk about in mining right now? You talk about anything. What is exciting to you right now? What's something that's really piquing your interest? Um, it- in, in the mining space itself, it's the um, the opportunities that are, are becoming available for miners within the high performance computing side of it. Um, you know, we've we've had we've had the fortunate position to have visited a couple of mining sites this year for the first time, so that was really really good to go. We went down to Corsicana and to the Denton facility, which is um, Core Scientific's flagship facility. We took part in two investor days at those sites. So that was really, really great to be sat there in an audience with um, all these New York analysts. And guess what? I I didn't know who any of them were, but believe you me, more than half of them knew who I was. And so I'm sort of like the pretend analyst that some people will say. I am an accountant by qualification, so I I am able to sort of like analyze numbers, but I don't do it as part of my living. These guys work on Wall Street. This is their job. They look at, you know, these tech companies and do that. So... It was great to be in their presence and understanding what wakes them up in the morning in this space. And at the moment, we're finding out it's the HPC that's doing that. The second part of it, um, in terms of what Bryce and myself are doing, we just love doing content. And we've done, like Bryce has articulated, we've we've done so much this year. But now we're we're doing more in terms of like, we're going to Amsterdam next month uh, as speakers at the Bitcoin Amsterdam conference. And we've just been... You know, speakers at the, at the main Bitcoin conference. So it's great when you get recognition outside of what you're doing to then be asked to go to these locations and and talk with you know the industry CEOs and chief mining officers of these companies. So it's a real it's a real it's real kudos to 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 be linked in with the people that were sort of like got us into this space by looking at at the mining to start with. But yeah, it's enjoyable. Just to echo that, it really is a a dream come true. And getting to go to these events, meeting Michael Saylor, watching uh, presidential candidates, Natalie Brunel, some some people that I've really looked up to uh, for years and years in the Bitcoin sector, being able to rub shoulders with them and meet them now is is just uh, surreal, really. So super fortunate and excited about Amsterdam and continuing that endeavor. In terms of the Bitcoin mining space, for me, what's so so exciting, I mentioned I'm into finance, investing, technology, kind of future technology. I initially got into Bitcoin mining after I went down the Bitcoin rabbit hole as an exposure or a leverage play on Bitcoin. But now these companies have evolved really into energy infrastructure plays. And uh, I don't know if it's coincidence or timing or uh, preemptive thought, but they they seem to have found themselves in the perfect spot at the perfect time with access to contracted power, existing infrastructure, and that underlying exposure to Bitcoin, which I'm so passionate about. So for me, this started as as a trade or or um, some sort of uh, experiment in Bitcoin exposure. And through what I've learned and my career now, and and the power mining analysis, it's turned into such an educational journey about power, about infrastructure, about grids, uh, support and reliability. And then now with AI and HPC, this has come to the forefront of of the entire world, it seems in terms of investing. And uh, our little show, the power mining analysis is is right there in the center of it. So for me, that's what gets me excited is just how quickly this is evolving and how rapidly other industries and Wall Street and investment banks are now looking at this space that that we've been talking about for so long. Yeah, I love what you both have just said. You know, Anthony's saying, hey, it's it's great to be able to walk into a room and people maybe know who I am. And I also, I giggled a little there because I pictured you two guys in the middle of Texas 
with New York analysts and Bryce is coming down from Canada and Anthony, you came over from across the pond. It's just like, wow, Bitcoin mining really puts a bunch of, a bunch of people who maybe would never meet, uh, you know, in a room in Texas. So that's really cool. And, you know, and then the creating of content and then the energy and the infrastructure, you know, I will be super honest before really starting at Compass. I understood from a theoretical level, really what Bitcoin mining was, but I really come from more of a Bitcoin background. Um, having, started in 2017, just buying some in an ATM, just out of strict curiosity saying, what is this digital money thing? And at that time I was working for nonprofits globally. And so I was like, wow, we do need a better way to transfer money around the world that isn't through the current financial system. Cause it's horrible if you've ever had to move money. And I'm sure both of you have had to move money across borders. Um, so that's really great to hear. And as we kind of, now we've talked about now what's exciting. Let's look ahead because I am feeling very bullish about the rest of the year. I was looking at some historical data that uh, Bitwise had put up and we should be doing well with Bitcoin price, which is going to be great for any miners listening because hash price has been nothing to write home about. Yeah. Bull run expectations. I would love to ask about your bull run expectations. And if you want to also share in the same breath, maybe the, the balloons that are going to lift us up, talk about some of the anchors that maybe we should be, we should be thinking about as we go into the bull run. So Bryce, you want to kind of continue there. Bull run expectations for Bitcoin mining, for the industry. You could talk about HPC, you could talk about energy infrastructure, some things maybe you're really excited to looking forward to over the next 16 months. And then something that maybe you're like, Hey, let's also keep our, let's also keep our eye on this as well. So for me, we neither one of us do price targets or price predictions, so we won't give you specific targets. Uh, what's interesting for me is I feel like the last bull run was really cut short due to the China ban on uh, mining. So I don't feel like we got to see that fully play out. Now, the new factors here in addition to that are the ETFs being launched, the access, the on-ramps that mainstream uh, people and investors have to Bitcoin now as part of their portfolio. So I'm feeling very optimistic about this bull run. You're right. In terms of hash price, uh, it's uh, it's been delayed longer than we would have hoped. I would have thought we would have started to see some new all-time highs at this point. But as one of my favorite sayings goes, the market can stay irrational a lot longer than you can stay liquid. So that's why it's so important. And Anthony and I just talked about this on today's podcast to have a strong balance sheet and be able to weather the storm, have these alternate revenue streams being the HPC, the consistency that you can really build and plan your company around with the Bitcoin being the the added icing on the cake, if if you want to, to do that analogy. So uh, for me, it's, it's very important that these companies play the long game. I saw Fred Thiel in his discussion, um, this week, actually, at the HC Wainwright conference, talking about a bull case at $100,000 Bitcoin. I think that's very wise of these CEOs to play it safe, assume the worst possible outcome. We all hope and think and believe Bitcoin is going to go uh, parabolic at some point in our life. That's why we all hold Bitcoin. That's why most of us won't sell it. That's why I've already got some for my kids. Uh, that will happen at some point. It's just at what point in time and is your company going to be around at that point? Uh, we've already started to see a lot of M&A. Upgrading these mining rigs is extremely expensive. That that can help offset the energy costs, but the actual CapEx investment is, is intense in this industry as it is with HPC. So I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity like we've seen out of CleanSpark, Riot, um, with smaller companies, whether they're private or public, not being able to keep up, expecting Bitcoin should have already taken off. It hasn't. They're going to be distressed and it's going to present opportunities. So in terms of this bull run, I don't know where we're going from here. I think a lot higher. I'm prepared. I'm ready and waiting. Uh, when we'll get there, I'm not sure. Well, in 2022, we saw, um, you know, the, 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 the issues that miners had over leveraged going through that period. And we saw a lot of miners uh, struggle some went into chapter 11 um, some have since been um, acquired by other mining companies but this year we've seen you know a lot more mer merger acquisitions than we have in previous years and i see that continuing uh, we've talked about um, those miners there's like if you split the miners the public miners down the middle you've got effectively those that can and those that can't um, in terms of grow and to grow organically, you need capital to grow. And the, some of these miners, you know, and Clean Spot's a really good example. Iron's another example, whereby using the ATM at the right time, 
uh, to raise capital and uh, creatively grow hash rate where you're not, you know, you're also the, the shareholders and companies are benefiting at the same time in terms of share price growth as well has been a real, uh, you know, good, good thing to see. And we've, I mean, we saw, you know, in that short space of time, I think it was October, October last year, I think Clean Spot was at 600 million in terms of valuation, went to 4 billion by the end of March. So I think I, I put out a tweet, uh, you know, in November saying when they'd reached a billion market cap for the first time, 11 days later, I had to write another tweet because they got to 2 billion. And so, you know, things can move really, really quickly. Bryce is right to say about the ETFs this year. That's the big game changer in terms of what didn't happen in previous cycles. So now we've not just got retail buying um Bitcoin. We've now got institutions buying Bitcoin through the ETFs, and that's a real game changer. Yes, we've had a few red days recently, and that's impacted, you know, because the price has gone down, and also the macroeconomic side of, of, of what's going on around the world with stock markets, with wars in countries, and all that sort of inflation, um, interest rates. That's going to impact, and 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 it and it's impacted um, the Bitcoin price as well. But if you look at cycles from before, and, there's, and the cycles have tended to follow quite clearly each each four years, um, and Ben was was able to articulate this at that same panel that um, that Fred Teal was on, and his his expectation was significantly higher than Fred. So Fred's been, you know, probably a little bit more pessimistic, and and, and rightly so. I mean, you know, we we, we thought in twenty twenty one the Bitcoin price was going to get to a uh, hundred thousand. I think it was. Um, Plan B was was one of the most well known people at that time with the stock to flow model. Everybody was following in it, and everyone was like anticipating the six figures there, and it never happened. It got to sixty nine thousand, and part of that really was down to Tesla buying Bitcoin when they bought it. That gave Bitcoin price literally a hundred percent hike, um, and then when they decided that you couldn't use Bitcoin to buy a Tesla, that brought the price back down again. So um, you know. It, Elon Musk had manipulated the price of Bitcoin all on his own, effectively, with a couple of tweets. Now we've got these ETFs buying, you know, some of these ETFs have got more Bitcoin than micro strategy. So, you know, there's a lot of Bitcoin being bought this year, a lot of green days. Um, but I'm sort of scratching my head at the moment for two things. One, we haven't seen the pullback in the global hash rate that we were anticipating. And the theory was expected once the halving would occur, if the Bitcoin price wasn't rallying, machines would come off the global network because there's no way they can be profitable at certain prices. And we haven't seen that to any certain extent. In fact, difficulty went up again two days ago. It's now at its highest it's been ever, all time high for difficulty, which impacts the Bitcoin miners because their productions get limited when the difficulty increases. The Bitcoin price is lower than it was at the end of August. So if September, which is the last month of the third quarter, is going to really impact these miners when their Q3 numbers come out. So we saw a pretty much sea of red for Q2. We're going to see a sea of red for Q3 unless we've got in the next 18 days some miraculous recovery of Bitcoin and it gets to, say, 70,000. And then it still only may only impact those miners who've got a hodl. So they'll they'll benefit from the FASB rules. But, um, you know, it's... It's, 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 well, we're hopeful. We're hopeful that, you know, the Bitcoin price rallies, we're, we're coming into the bull cycle. Now, if you think back to 2021, it was October, November, December of 2020 when the Bitcoin price started to move. The mining stock started to drastically move that three months there. So if we're following similar cycles, we've got a lot of action ahead of us. Anthony, I want to stay with you for a second. You, in your recent article, which I will link below, you talk about the five metrics that are really important to understand when you're trying to evaluate a Bitcoin mining operation. And Bryce, I don't know if you read it, but I'm gonna throw the question to you after, the, after I ask Anthony, but you have <laughs> the five metrics are current ratio, enterprise value divided by net asset ratio, uh, debt to equity ratio, and then EV uh, divided by current hash rate, and then EV divided by future hash rate. If you could only choose one of those to compare Bitcoin miners uh, as far as probably efficiency, maybe profitability, just to, to, to try to get an, and this is an impossible question, right? But to try to get an overall idea of a Bitcoin miner's health, which, which one would you look at? Because throughout the article, you have an amazing amount of graphs and tables. Thank you, Jacob, for creating some of those, um, which really kind of outline how that looks among the, I think the 15 or 16 miners. So which of those would you look at? And for somebody who's maybe coming into Bitcoin mining, and they're like, you know, how do I wrap my head around evaluating uh, companies? They, they, they're all sort of 
various types of valuation metrics. They all do something totally different. So you can't compare the metrics themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, if I was to say enterprise value uh, compared to um, equity, um, so effectively, you know, what are you, if you're investing $1 in a company, what are you actually, what are you receiving in terms of assets? Um, and so that's a, that's probably a good indicator because that doesn't matter what you're doing in a company. It just gives you a valuation of the assets they've got. And that's really, we went, we talked through this in a podcast earlier today and, and, and actually it gives you a good indication then um, of what you're, what you're investing in. Some of them, some of the stocks now, because the prices have come down, are looking effectively fairly undervalued in terms of if you in if you uh, invest a dollar in a certain company that might give you four dollars of assets in that company from an enterprise value uh, point of view so um you know that's certainly one to look at the, the the ones with the exahash you have to take um things into consideration so when you're looking at exahash which is a really good it's a good metric to, to, to look across all the miners but bear in mind some of these miners do more than bitcoin mining and that's where it becomes an issue. So you're valuing the company, the whole company, but you're then just looking at how much would it be valued just from the self-mining exahash. And if you look at a company like Bitdeer, they only they only have 40% of their company does self-mining. So you're you're looking at the whole value of the company and then saying, let's divide it by 40% effective the hash rate. And it sort of doesn't it doesn't align. Now we talked through today, Bryce myself on the podcast, and we think actually maybe megawatts would be a better alternative or or certainly one to include as well. I don't think they're bad metrics on their own. And people should not look at one metric when looking at a company. Look at three, four, five metrics, even six metrics before you start making any decisions whether to invest in something. Because I can you can put up a case on one metric for all different reasons, for all different miners to, to, to showcase them. I've seen these CEOs go on panels across different countries in Dubai, in Nashville, in Amsterdam, in London, and every CEO can put their mining company as the best mining company in the industry using a metric that supports that position. And believe you me, they can all do it. Um, so when you're looking at one metric, you don't get the whole pitch. You've got to start looking at a number of metrics. And that's probably something I've tried to do over the last two and a half years with my articles for Compass Mining is highlight many different types of metrics, profitability, margins. But this last article is just really focusing on valuation of the company. So how many different metrics could I, I use from the recent earnings results to do that? Yeah, wonderful. And, and Bryce, I, I think Anthony just kind of rounded things out there. But do you want to weigh in? Uh, on how you're looking at, or maybe, you know, when you started getting into Bitcoin mining, was there a metric that was easy for you to be able to kind of apples to apples, not just apples to oranges? Yeah, for sure. We we just went over the article this morning, so I've brushed up on it. <clears throat> I was going <laughs> to say, if you're looking just at Bitcoin mining, then I like the enterprise value to hash rate or future hash rate. But as we talked about on today's podcast, as these companies diversify into other uses for this electricity, uh, the enterprise value to megawatts, I think right now, Jarrett, would be probably the best metric uh, that I would be interested in, in seeing and comparing for these companies. However, like Anthony said, um, <clears throat> there's a lot more that's available in terms of uh, rumors and anticipation and news and expectations that aren't captured in these in these numbers. So uh, never want to use one metric in isolation. Yeah, I, I think obviously you can't use one metric. I know it was an impossible question, but I like asking those just to see how we do. Um, we're now at the point of the podcast where I'm really excited to do something. So if you're listening to this on a podcast platform, you need to go over to YouTube. Within that link on the podcast platform, there will be the YouTube link. I always add it in there because watching this is always fun. And in in the United States, when a call, when a high school football player or a high school athlete is going to decide to go play college, play D1. Normally they're a big deal. They normally sit down and in front of them there's a table and they have three or four hats. Now it could be Oklahoma, it could be Florida, it could be Ohio. And what they do in their press conferences, they choose one of their hats and they put the hat on. So now I want to talk about how you guys are, well, we now have a very formal collaboration between Compass Mining and the Power Mining Analysis and ask you guys to please go ahead and put your hats on. Let's let's do that as though you were high school athletes deciding to play D1 college football. D1 sign up right there. Exa exactly, D1 sign up. So now with that, um, Bryce, if you could, could you talk a little bit about why you're excited to work, you know, mesh these two together, these two great brands here in Bitcoin mining, which is power mining analysis and compass mining. 
Yeah, for sure. So specifically what we're talking about is Compass Mining uh, graciously became our uh, lead sponsor for the podcast itself. So Anthony and I, when we initially put this together, we knew we wanted the interviews to be a component. We wanted a live component, an audio podcast component, but we like to have our regular podcasts every day just to talk about news and our own opinions. So uh, this is a great partnership in so many ways. As we mentioned earlier, Anthony has published over 80 articles for Compass. So you've had a longstanding relationship. For me specifically, why I'm so excited is this all comes down to education. I'm big on uh, finding a mission in life and a purpose. And for me, I feel like Bitcoin is where I can really help out. And by spreading education through our platform and our connection, we can help other people learn about Bitcoin, invest in Bitcoin, learn about mining, which really supports the network itself. So having a partnership with an established company like Compass that's got the notoriety, the reputation, um, really the backing in it just propels our platform and gives it so much more uh, authority and recognition and um, I guess respect in this space, which enables us to get to a bigger population and educate more people. So for me, that's really what it's all about here, Jared, is working with other like-minded people and companies to support Bitcoin, support the miners, uh, to really help people learn about this technology. Absolutely. Anthony, the hat looks good on you. Why are you excited to, you know, I know you have been collaborating with us for years with the articles, but it, it feels like it's like the next level, the next step of being able to support power mining analysis. So why are you excited to uh, continue the collaboration? Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's great space. And, um, you know, Will Foxley saw something in me at the start of this uh, journey back in April 2022. Even when I wasn't sure about it, he saw something there and um, he he um, moved on to a new project last year, around about this time last year, and you took over his chair. And so, you know, my relationship with you guys working through Compass, I've met all the senior team at Compass Mining in person, um, all the team now. I met, I met them, at, uh, most of them at Amsterdam last year, and I met again a, a different team in Nashville this year. So so I've met the team there. Um, great, great company to work with. Um, I've, I've always had, you know, a great working relationship with the company. They've given me so much autonomy to to do what I do. Um, I can say now, and I said on the podcast today, you know, I've written 85 articles. I can't remember. I don't think there's been a time when somebody from Compass has said, Anthony, can you do this article? It's usually that you're quite happy for me to, you know, come up with the idea. Um, I, I mean, I know I do, a, I do a general monthly article, which nobody, I don't think anybody else does anything like that in the industry, um, which is, you know, I find it's helpful and the feedback, I get is you know is, is positive. It puts everything in one article from what the miners have been doing on the previous thirty or thirty-one days. But this is like now going into what we've been doing now. We're building power mining analysis, and it's not just about you know we're doing podcasts. It's a whole sort of like platform of things. There we've got a website. In fact, Bryce, we've got we've, we're on our second website, and we're only sort of nine months old. So you know we've gone sort of like into a, a more. A professional website using HTML. So we've got two people working on the website as we speak. Um, and we've got support from some of the people to help with the analysis, to help with that. We do a newsletter as well every fortnight. So we give all the subscribers, subscribe on the, on the actual website. You get the newsletter that's got articles, updates, um, all the uh, interviews, everything on, in that newsletter that's happening in two weeks there. So that's a, a good source of information. And, um, you know, it's just great that we're doing, working with this now, and it helps us do more. That's what we're doing for. We're trying to, you know, to grow power mining analysis. And who knows where it where it, it finishes in a few years' time. You know, we, we're only sort of not even nine months into the game at the moment. We only started at the beginning of this year. And we just, we had to do it really, really quickly because, um, you know, we wanted to, we'd have the conversation with miners, but it's all right talking about what you're going to deliver. You've then got to try and deliver it. And uh, we've noticed this year there's a lot more people uh, coming into the space and doing things. And so look, and actually the great thing is a lot of people sort of like look at what we're doing and saying, you know, maybe that's what they're trying to aim to be is to deliver what we're doing. But, you know, we're learning every day. We're not the we're not the experts. Nobody's an expert in this space. And that even goes down to the people sitting in those C-suite um, um, chairs in in the industry, because believe you me, if we did a podcast next week on the errors some of these Bitcoin miners have made, we'd have to allow about five or six hours to go through those 
in in short term. So, so you know, we're all learning in the space. No one's an expert, but it's a great space to be in, and it's great to be partnering with Compass Mining. Absolutely excellent. Anthony, I know that you have a hard stop coming up soon, which is great because it's with another person in the Bitcoin mining industry. And there's no way that you guys are putting out, you know, hundreds of episodes a year without having a full schedule. So I do want to respect that and let you both go. I'm going to add all of your contact info, both of your X's, both of your LinkedIn's, Power Mining Analysis website, Power Mining Analysis, obviously the YouTube channel so people can go watch that. And just really want to thank you for joining we at Compass are super excited. Um, both of you want to lead in a world where education leads, right? And that's going to be able to empower people with information so that way they can make decisions about their future. And that's a really awesome thing. And that totally ties in with where Compass is and where Compass is going to continue to go. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, please go ahead and subscribe. Follow us on X, LinkedIn, and YouTube at Compass Mining. Anthony and Bryce, thank you so much for taking the time today. Thanks yep, for having you're me. most welcome. We'll be back soon. Thank you.